In this video, I'm gonna give you a full guide to how to achieve and build a modern rotational golf swing. So this is what we see all the top players in the world now start to use lots of body rotation going through the golf ball. And like a lot of you have found out who've tried to do this, it's way harder than they make it look. Because there's a lot of things you need in the golf swing, backswing, downswing, and your setup to be able to achieve this. If you have got even one of the things wrong or slightly off, you're not gonna be able to do it. So this video is gonna be structured in the different points of the golf swing from setup, backswing, and different sections of the downswing of things we want to see and that we need to have in our golf swing to be able to functionally rotate through the golf ball and have this move that we see all the top players have. Rotating in the downswing is all about if your golf swing is good enough and in the spot to rotate, so we need to make sure it's cleaned up and we're having drills at the end of all of these sections that you can go and practice. And at the end of this video, there's gonna be a practice structure and the ultimate rotation drill that you can do once you've got the knowledge to be able to get in there. So this video is gonna be more just info based. There's not gonna to be too many edits. There's not gonna to be too many side clips of things. So it's gonna, like we said, be sectioned and get ready for a lot of info and for me to be talking to you for quite a while, as you can see in that video length. So number one, setup. Setup is so huge to be able to turn in that downswing and have that rotation body turn going through the golf ball. So what we want to see for rotation with our setup, we want to have our armpits over the balls of our feet. So we want that alignment to be there, armpits over the balls of the feet, because that's going to help your lower body manage the weight of your upper body through the swing and stay in balance. So then we'll be able to turn in the golf swing and keep good balance as we turn. Because so many golfers do this. They'll be having their armpits dead in front of their toes. They'll have their pelvis really stuck behind them and a lot of lower back curve. So then the mass of their upper body is now in front of their lower body. So your lower body now can't really manage the weight of this upper body. So as you turn, we'll see a lot of players here might be okay up to the top, still with the upper body rear in front. And then if let's say they stayed in this position in a downswing and turn, their weight's gonna go massively onto their toes because their upper body's so far ahead of them and they're gonna lose balance and you won't really be able to turn. So what we see players do from there, we'll see them shove the pelvis underneath them, get the upper body moving back to make the spine extend to one piece. And that keeps their balance, but you still like your rotation because you early extend going through the golf ball. That's not the body rotation downswing. We may even see some golfers have even in the backswing, their pelvis move forward to regain their balance. Again, make the spine more one piece so they can stay in balance. But again, if your pelvis moves forward, going up to the top of the swing, there is no way you're gonna turn going through the golf ball. So that's why you need these armpits, like we said, over the balls of the feet, and then you can stay in your balance and be able to turn functionally and be able to hit these better shots through better rotation. So how do you go about doing that? Yes, there's a little drill for this, a little procedure. Now, like we said, armpits over balls of the feet. Really simple way of doing this. I want you to stand to the golf ball initially with very, very slight bend in the knees, very slight, dead upright with your body. Try to address the ball from there, you can't. So what I want you to do now is get to the golf ball only via relaxing your mid and upper back. So I've kept the same flex in the knees, I've relaxed my upper back and mid back, now I'm on the golf ball. So I haven't gone and pushed my pelvis back, got more knee bend to get down on it. I have just relaxed that mid and upper back. There we go, now armpits are over the balls of the feet. But if you're an individual with long arms like me, you might have to have a little shuffle back whilst maintaining that same structure of your body. Now you're there. You can do that every time. So have that straighter legs, little bit of a flex, tiny flex in them, straight back, get the club to the ground by relaxing mid and upper back, shuffle back. Now we're in that good spot. Now we can move. So let's talk about backswing. So backswing, there is a bunch of things we can talk about here. There's gonna be almost different little sections to backswing here. So we're gonna start off with takeaway, what we like to see. Now I'm gonna talk about, let's say if a golfer here had a standard golf grip. So more of what we would call a traditional grip or let's say for takeaway, because this makes a huge difference, your grip type to takeaway, standard grip here. So standard grip golfer, what I'd wanna see for a rotational golf swing here, I would wanna see this player have their club face matching their spine angle. So 
angle of the club face there matches the angle of your spine. So what the takeaway would generally look like for a standard grip player would be their hands will have a slight in move, very slightly inwards to where they'll be about a fist distance away from the right leg when the hands are level with that right leg. But we would also see how that club head will travel just a little bit on the outside of the hands there. So we get into that position, we're right, at shaft parallel to ground, the club head is now roughly around my hands. So that will result in that square face. If then I don't do anything funky with my club face or my wrist angles from there, that club face is gonna remain square for the entirety of the swing. So why this is so important? Because if that club face, let's say is too closed, pointing towards the ground in my takeaway, I would have to do something to be able to re-square it. Most likely I'd have to stand my body up to raise the hand to square it. So that is not going to, of course, get you to turn through the golf ball. If I had my club face too open, rolled it on the inside with that open face there, this is a very classic one for players who can't rotate, I would have to slow down my body rotation if it remains open to be able to square the club up. So again, not gonna be able to have that body rotation release. But if I keep it square and it maintains that throughout the swing, I can keep that club easily without trying to do anything, square to the arc, and I can just turn through and it's gonna remain square. So a little drill I like to see for players for that square club face is to get themselves to where they're around shaft parallel to the ground. So like we described what we wanna see, about a fist distance outside that right leg. I wanna see that real club face there being matching my spine angle and I wanna stop here. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swing up and swing through. So like a Ricky Fowler drill there. So there we go, stop there, club face is square, swing up, swing through and that's gonna make sure that club face is getting square early and my takeaway isn't stopping me from being able to rotate. So now let's talk about turn in the backswing and how the right arm moves in the backswing. So this is a little bit about setup as well, this right arm portion, if we talk about that first. I like to see players have the underside of their right elbow pointing out in front of them, but also just a little bit to the left there. So why I like that is because it encourages the right arm to have more of a folding movement. Because if a player has their right elbow a little bit too inwards, so it's pointing a little bit down the target line, that's gonna force this to happen. Right arm's gonna get stuck behind the body. And then if the right arm gets stuck behind the body or seam line, we could call it here, then it gets stuck. So then what have you got to do to get to the golf ball? You've got to stall out your rotation, throw the right arm. So again, if you have it just turned in, you see, we can see my little UFO there. And then what we wanna do is make sure that as we're turning back, now we're encouraging the right arm to have this folding movement. And the ideal right arm movement is like you're doing a half of a bicep curl in the gym. You're doing a half bicep curl, so you don't wanna do a full one. You have no width doing that. You wanna do a half repetition, but you do that as you turn. So half bicep curl as I turn up to the top. Now my right arm's more in front of my seam line. So then as I turn down, the right arm can stay in front of my pivot. I can turn through the golf ball nicely, not have to do anything. That's how my right arm can help me with my rotation. So before we get into the turn portion there, a great little drill to do here. If you, let's say, struggle with this area, have that right arm in that good setup position, underside pointing in front and to the left. And now what I want you to do, just grip it with your left arm, and then cup your right elbow with your left hand, the back of your left hand. Now you can only do this half bicep curl going up. You can't shoot it behind you. So just do these one arm swings and then you're gonna be able to feel that good right arm mechanics. So here's two drills. You could have a classic ball drill. So like here with the impact ball, tour strike smart ball also be good with this. Got my good right arm position that's set up. Keep it in between my arms through the entirety of my swing and then that right arm is gonna be staying more in front of my seam line. If it moves behind, it drops. So really good feedback. That's why Tour Strike Smart Ball is better than this one really, because it doesn't do what it just did there. Run away from you. So keep it in between your arms, then boom, there we go. So the turn portion here, the rotation, the backswing, again, so important. There's two areas of this, two things it affects. So what I'll see for players who turn poorly that affects their rotation negatively, I'll see them get up to the top, mainly just turn with their upper body and we'll see their right hip start to move forward to where then when their right hip starts to move forward, 
it's just going to continue to go forward in the downswing. You've got to early extend, you're not going to be able to turn. So I like to see players with their rotation in the backswing have their right hip start to go back. So for players in their sequencing, I like that to happen just after the takeaway and then have that right hip start to move back. When the right hip's moving back, like someone's grabbing the right trouser pocket, it's going to open up and rotate those hips. Rotating the hips is a better way to try to turn because when you rotate your hips, the upper body rotates too. So having that right pocket being pulled back after takeaway there is going to get those hips to open, but it's going to get you hip depth. So hip depth is so important. It's when that hip moves more back, right hip moves more back, more depth means more back, then that's going to encourage the pelvis to stay back as you turn into the downswing. So it's going to encourage you to rotate again. See, encouragement, the environment to rotate. Now, this again, why it's so important is backswing rotation when it comes to downswing rotation. It's the depth of your arms and your hands. So with players who, again, don't turn their hips very well, maybe they move forward, maybe they stay where they are, they don't turn them, their arms will go up to the top of their swing. They'll have a lack of arm and hand depth where the left arm is high, the hands are high. So then when they turn the downswing, what happens from there? Downswing puts a rotation, puts a little bit of an outward force on the hands. Now they're over the top, they're gonna to cut across it. So a lot of players from there, they'll either do that, they'll swing over the top or their rotation will stall and slow down because then the hand path needs to drop. When your rotation slows down, hand path drops. So it matches up with that movement just in a very unfunctional way. So. Good depth, good hip depth, arm depth, all created by good hip rotation. Best drill to do for this is with this chair here. Now this chair will really focus on getting that right hip back. Now we're gonna talk about this again at the last part of this video, this chair, and when we get into the downswing portion. So if I can get these balls to stop, let's just move them off. I want to now push this chair back with my right hip in the backswing, push it back, like I said, preferably after shaft parallel, pushing it back. We can do it earlier like Rory McIlroy, for example. But if we're pushing it back, then we're gonna be moving, getting that hip rotation. When we're turning in that backswing, we're getting that good hand and arm depth. Better you turn, the more around you your hands are gonna go, so you're gonna get more depth. And then when you turn down, club's not gonna be out in front of you. And it's gonna really be a good one to do for great rotation and enable you to rotate. Hip depth is so important. That's why I've got so many videos on my channel talking about it. So that's a good one you can do for the general rotation of your hips. But let's say you're getting that hip rotation, but you're still not quite getting your arms around you. So where that left arm is covering your shoulder plane, hands are more around your heels or your ankles, which of course helps you get the club on path when you turn the downswing. You could do something like this as a drill. So where we still want to get our hip turn, still want to get that hip depth, but here's a swing plate. So a swing plate with extension pole attachment, just a long alignment stick. We want it to be pretty much over and covering our right shoulder, maybe even slightly above it. Now, we want it to be a hand's distance outside the right shoulder. And then all we do, we get that good hip turn. We could use the chair at the same time, or we could just do this and just swing underneath it. And that's gonna give you, if you struggle with that high left arm, a good thing to be able to give yourself feedback and drill away that movement. If you want one of these, there's a link in the description. I've got a discount code for the swing plate, which is JChan Golf in lowercase, which will get you 10% off at checkout. So that's all in the description. So let's talk about transition. So going from backswing to downswing, or you could say start of the downswing. How to start that downswing? So many YouTube videos are titled that, like a lot of mine are as well. So how you start that downswing is so incredibly important. It is what I call the new impact is your start of the downswing. So what we want to happen, we want to have, so we've got all that good stuff before, let's say what we talked about in backswing, got that depth, right arm's in a good spot. We've got that nice square club face, all the good stuff. We've got that good hip depth also. What we wanna do, we wanna start the downswing by getting that lower body and mid torso to rotate first whilst the arms and the chest stay where they are in that first part of the downswing. That's gonna do a bunch of things for you. That's one going to help this shaft shallow. So the shaft is then going to shallow as a reaction. Got to make sure your grip pressure is fairly light when you do this as well. I wouldn't want it more than a four or five out of ten in grip pressure. So that's going to help gravity hit that club and shallow out the golf club. So that's one big thing. Two, it helps the right arm get back in front of you. So it should be already in front of your seam line, but having that good movement there of having that lower body mid torso turn, it's like the left hip going back, 
that's going to get that right arm moving more in front and you can see how, how that's affecting the club shaft so it's going to help shallowing it's going to help the arms get back in front of the pivot and it's going to help the club start to move on path because what i see with so many golfers they'll be so eager to get this downswing rotation they'll rotate the upper body too and that just gets the club flying out in front and chopping across the golf ball. So that's why you need the arms and the chest to be really patient. That's why I like the feeling of the arms being slow and feeling that style of downswing really be slow with that upper body, like in slow motion, whilst letting the lower body mid torso start to turn and move. So that's a really good way to do it. Some golfers, like I've seen with quite a few of my videos, some top tour players like John Rahm, for example, will actually start his downswing before with his lower body before he's actually completed it with his backswing. So he will technically be completed with his backswing turn of his lower body when his left arm is about three quarters of the way up his swing. And then when he gets from left arm parallel up to the top, he starts to already transition with that lower body into the downswing. You see players like Lexi Thompson on the LPGA Tour do it. Of course, one of the longest players on the LPGA Tour. We see so many golfers do that move and it can be a useful one for you out there to learn and repicture if you really struggle with that downswing sequencing too. You have to have it in there because that enables all these good shallowing shafts, like we said, arms in front of the pivot and it helps you turn through the golf ball with good path. Otherwise, you're just going to have too much of an out to win path if you rotate everything at once. But let's say if you're too quiet with the body in general and the arms start to race first, then your body's not going to catch up and your arms are always going to fire past and you're not going to be able to use your body rotation very well. So how we do it with this drill, one that I see you see all the time on my channel, resistance band tied to an upright. I know a lot of you don't like this drill, but I do. It's really, really useful. So having this up onto an upright resistance band, about a medium strength one. So then you grip it just like so in kind of like a makeshift top of the backswing because there's resistance to it i can't really do anything with my arms so i want to really feel like i'm not really doing anything at all with my arms not pulling it not doing nothing i just want to really get that lower body mid torso turning it's like there's something underneath my foot that i'm trying to squish i'm trying to smush underneath kind of like my left heel you can see how that's rotating my lower body mid torso and getting my arms to stay there if I do that an absolute ton, that's getting all those good little moves in transition that I want to happen, that change of direction. Then I, when I replicate it into a ball, I get those nice movements in there. So have a good go at that. If that's that portion. Let's talk about the next one. So let's talk about mid downswing. As downswing is really going to be in three parts here, just like with transition, first part of downswing, mid downswing, and then through the golf ball all different things happen. So this is why this is so important. And I do have an even fuller course on this, which has got way more details of every little bit, which is on Skillist, on the app version, Ultimate Guide to Rotation and Downswing. It's a link in the description. And I'm gonna be making a new one very soon as well. Still gonna have the original being able to purchase, but keep tuned to the channel. I'm gonna be releasing a new one and it's gonna be on my own website as well. So stay tuned. So mid downswing, really, really important. So we've got that good first move, lower body, mid torso separating. So we've got that shaft starting to shallow, right arm's now in front of the pivot, I'm moving on good path, I've rotated with that lower body. This is when I'm around left arm parallel on the downswing. Now from here, what's really important, I wanna keep the tilt of my hips, so important this bit. So in my left side, I want it to stay lower than my right. So if I do that and show you with this alignment stick going through my belt loops here, this is really gonna be the thing that's gonna keep you turning and maintaining those good movements. Because if I say this is the left side of my hip, I want this to continue to turn around. So that's where we get to the impact area, which is shaft parallel to the ground. So if I can keep this stick turning down on the round, then I'm in that good spot. So that's our little drill for this section. You can think in transition, stick going down around, continuing to go down around. And then let's talk about after that, how we're gonna move through the golf ball. So we've got a good hip tilt like we talked about mid downswing through the golf ball. So let's say now through the golf ball, the impact zone, which is from shaft parallel to shaft parallel. So we're at shaft parallel. What we should typically see, hips should be, this is all dependent on your mobility, this portion. Your hips, let's say for me, would be just a little bit open to my golf ball. So they're pointing a little bit towards the left of the golf ball. My chest, if I'm swinging well, should be dead on that golf ball square to it. So from here, this is such a common question. How do I turn through the golf ball? How do I get through it? This is where 
you want to have that hip tilt, but this is where that hip tilt starts to raise up a little bit because this is where you're extending your left side. Your left side straightens and your right side drops down. So when that left side straightens, your right side's going to do the opposite and go into flexion. So that's where you see all these videos like mine or other golf coaches on YouTube, for example, talking about right shoulder going onto the golf ball. That and left side extension, left leg straightening, are paired together. So let's talk about that left leg straightening. This is the thing that really gets you through that golf ball. Because when that left leg straightens from shaft parallel into the golf ball, it pulls the left side of the body up. It's the whole left side extends. So then that's the left shoulder going up and around. And you can see, what does that look like from a down the line angle? Rotation through the golf ball. And like we said, it will get that right side crunching down too. So the feel here, and the little drill is actually gonna be two options for the drill. So we know, okay, left side straightening, which is gonna force the right side more down, but it's going down as that right shoulder is moving. So even though this isn't about shifting in the downswing, this is all about rotation, you still need to shift your weight gradually as you do this. Still needs that pressure, still needs to be getting onto the lead side, otherwise you're just gonna chunk it. So here we go, left side is straightening as I'm going through the ball, rotating me, that's gonna get that right shoulder dropping down to ball, that's getting me open, that's clearing me. I don't just wanna continue just to turn through it without having any of the dynamic movements, otherwise my club path will just start to get a little bit out in front. A lot of these movements we're talking about in this video, guys, are gonna be very instinctual. You're just gonna do them after you get in good positions, but that's why we need the knowledge of this area. So left side straightening, right side down, going from shaft parallel to the ground is how we get through that golf ball. It's what whips you through and whips you open. So having this stick in between your belt loops is a great one. This is part of the drill I'm gonna talk about at the end of this, so after this section. But we wanna be feeling either that left side snapping straight going through the golf ball, or a little bit of that, or feeling that right shoulder dropping on that golf ball, or the right shoulder feeling like it's beating the club to the golf ball, which is also a very, very good feel for it. They'll both get very similar moves in there and both keep you turning through the golf ball. Really, really useful. One little trick you can also do to get through that shot if I grab another ball. If you're someone who struggles with chest rotation, is feeling or getting that head to swivel as you go through, like a Dustin Johnson, David Duvall, Annika Sorumstar, and that type of stuff. To where if you get that head swiveling as you're going through impact, that's gonna force the chest to rotate as well. Taking your after golf ball is a load of rubbish. Coming out of posture, head up like that is very valid. That's early extension. But swiveling your head where you're staying in your posture but your eyes are just looking down the target before you get to the golf ball is just gonna rotate your chest. It won't do anything negative to you. So if you struggle to rotate your chest, absolutely brilliant one to keep you turning through. So guys, there we go. Those are the position. So guys, there we go. Those are the positions we want to be able to get into or motions we want to be able to achieve in certain parts of the golf swing to be able to encourage ourselves to rotate. So as a little summary, we want square club face, more importantly, right arm in front of the pivot, good turn with good hip depth, adequate arm depth. We want to be turning nicely in that downswing. We want to be separating lower body mid torso, keeping hip tilt, extension through the golf ball. Sounds like a ton of stuff, doesn't it? But you actually don't need to try and do all of those. That's why I gave you drills at each part of it, not for you to do all of those drills, you to know your swing enough to be able to know what areas you've got to work on, okay? Because this part is what all of you can do. So that last part is not what all of you should do. Again, like we said, it's all about what you need to do personally for your golf swing. Now, here is a drill to be able to get yourself turning through the golf ball I can guarantee it, but make sure you've got the things in your golf swing. So this is it. So, and this is like the ultimate hip rotation drill, it really is. So this is where we're having elements of two drills here. So like I said, this will make a reappearance in the video, absolutely. But we also have this stick that goes through our belt loops. Tiny bit of the stick on the right-hand side, a lot of it on the left. So that's why hip tilt, even though we only did a little bit of this video about the hip tilt, like I said, there's way more on the ultimate guide to rotation about this, but I still wanted to give you guys on YouTube a taste of what everything's about when it comes to rotation. But hip tilt is so important. If that hip tilt levels out, it's really hard to rotate, really, really hard, almost impossible. So we know, okay, what's this chair doing? We're pushing it back, the backswing of our right hip, pushing it back with our left hip. That's gonna get the openness of our rotation. That's gonna get the backswing rotation. So from there, if I can keep this stick going down and around and just leave it to those two points, 
you're gonna be doing a really good drill. Like we said, we don't need to think about every single little bit because even pushing this chair back, continue pushing back, what's that do? That extends the left side as I push it through as well. So it gets you the rotation through the shot. So stick pointing down around in the downswing, push the chair back with the right hip in the backswing, back with the left hip in the downswing. So that's going to get you some really, really good rotation. You can start it off with full swing, absolutely. Or what I would recommend, don't be silly, do it with a half swing to start off with. So really make sure you're getting that downswing motion in that half swing and then build it up as you go through here. So again, let's do another one. There we go, just a little half swing feel. Really get yourself turning through there. So that is a great drill for you to go and do to feel the good rotation and really make sure you know what points in your golf swing are affecting you. So that's where if you need help, absolutely, there's a link in the description there for me on Skillist for online lessons. Absolutely brilliant way to learn remotely. Anywhere in the world, you can get in contact with me and we can do a lesson on Skillist to make sure we're working on the right things. You don't want to be wasting your time and spinning your wheels. And you might even have a golf swing where you get in certain positions that I say not to get into in this video and still move okay. And you might be changing something that doesn't need to be changed. Like we see out on tour, we see so many players get into specific positions. Let's say Justin Thomas with a higher left arm, Colin Morikawa, let's say, for example, in a similar position, still rotate incredibly well through the golf ball because they're matching up with certain movements. Again, talk about all that in the ultimate guide to rotation. Again, that is in the video description as well, but stay tuned because there is one coming out. So, absolutely, guys, don't have to do all of these. I say it again, do not have to do all of them. Just what applies to your golf swing. Don't even try to think of all of these at once. Know what bit you need to get into, but increasing the golfing knowledge of this area is so important. Golfing IQ is huge to be able to get better and have ownership over your golf swing. But all can have a good go. For those of you who got through this video, it's a long one. So do that drill with a chair and a stick, that's gonna be brilliant for you. So if you enjoyed this video and you want more videos like this, more of a complete guide, let me know. But other than that, click that like button. And if you want more golf instruction, just like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button too, to be notified every time I put out a video.